How's it going, guys? I'm Jeff. I'm Alyssa. And welcome back to the Real Life Podcast. We're talking about faith, culture, and answer your questions. Welcome back, you guys. Another week, another dollar, or I don't know. He's another week, another Lacroix. <laughs> That's what I mean. Okay. Anyways, um, <laughs> I wish you guys could see Jeff's shoes right now. They literally Can like. You see that on YouTube? I don't think you can. Well, you can't really tell because you're wearing a black sock. That's but true. literally, but there a, is a hole on the side that is the size that? of like I can fit my hand a baseball inside my shoe. That's how big that. And yet yeah, he's still wearing them. Guys, okay, so let me know. But this is Jeff's story of his life. He buys new clothes, but he won't wear any of them. I don't until... buy new clothes. Well, once in a blue moon, the basic thing is he does not wear them until they are like in threads and he can no longer, like he oh, has this Galilego yeah, shirt never mind, that saying. he's been wearing for at least three years that has had holes in the belt area for years. And every time I'm like, <laughs> can I throw this away? He's like, no, no, no. And finally, the other night at dinner, he had like a hole that was the size of a golf ball. So she just came and up and I ripped just, it open. I just she knew if it was huge, a little I would finally... bit and <laughs> the whole thing ripped to shreds. That was so rude. <laughs> it became a belly shirt, which was actually right. very fun. But... She did it on purpose though, because she knows I definitely yeah. would have to throw it away then. But no, I see what you're saying. No, you meant I buy new clothes. I thought you were going to say yeah, I buy new clothes and don't wear them because I wear these. But no. Yeah, she meant when I, when I get anything that I wear, I just wear it out i wear it every day yeah. all the time like, until remember, it's just like even these like i got a lot of life left in these babies these shoes right I, unless if you were in washington where it was rainy but True. i remember our first year of marriage jeff <laughs> we we really had no money so there's that but he had a pair of charcoal jeans that he wore every day and we lived in this house with a washer and dryer that was very old and the dryer like shrunk clothes and did things to them and by the end of the year your pants were like brown not because they were dirty it just like turned colors and you still eventually i was like we need to <laughs> get a new pair of I don't pants remember that. you literally wore them every day and i remember having to Was tell the you ones i wore in our engagement photos maybe i remember having to tell you Kinda the like moment the you got home from work like take off your pants i'm gonna throw them in the wash and you can have them again for well, yeah, dinner she can never wash anything because i never that that because you never took them off yeah, that gets a little gross but she can't watch much of my stuff so no no now I, you're I, better I, now i'm older now i'm 30 years old now so now well, i just we, buy four of the same thing so like i have three <laughs> i have three of the exact same pair of shorts yeah i have He's 15 Doug. or 20 black t-shirts uh yeah i just that's the way you're literally doug yeah Yes. Yeah. And Patty mayonnaise. Yes. Yes. Oh, see? I love Doug. Oh, I loved Doug. Remember the closet with all the oh, white shirts? Yes, I was cracked up every time. And like jeans? It. Was it jeans and a white shirt? No, it was like shorts. Yeah, it was like wasn't his outfit like brown shorts, the yes. white t-shirt, the green sleeveless sweater, and like a little right? Wasn't it? Wasn't it? Oh, maybe so. And I remember Quail Man? Was that yes, yeah, I love so Quail Man. I was Quail Man for Halloween one year. Oh, so good. Okay. Anyway. We need to get into this. Okay. So we have another <laughs> episode to get into, guys, um, about the, the American Awakening Book Club. Hopefully you enjoyed last week. Hopefully you've pre-ordered the book. I just think it's such a book for this moment. And so we just said, hey, we're going all in on this because I want to use anything we have to push towards this because, man, this is... Oh, I just... I w I'm actually getting sick of all the bad messages out there right now. So I'm just like, I want to use all of our energy to point people towards the right stuff. Yeah. And this is, this book is it. So um, before that though, again, guys, every single week, a new episode on Yippee drops. Yippee! So, Wait, how's it go? Yippee! yippee. How's Wait. the little sound thing go? The sound like, bite? Oh, I think it's just Yippee, like, but it's like kids that yell it. Oh. You know? Yeah. Yippee! How's, there we go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but like in a, like in a chorus way, like, you know, hundreds of kids. Yeah. But uh, guys, every single week a new episode drops. So I think we have like three or four episodes there up on our Beth Key show now. Um, guys, we love that show. If you don't know, it's Ordinary Adventures where every single week we uh, try to do an ordinary adventure and find a truth about God's love, blessing, or goodness somewhere around the house, outside, or on an adventure. They're so fun making it. Thank you guys for your feedback. Again, the promo is still going. So jeffandalissa.com slash yippee. Um, or just go to yippee.tv and use the promo code Bethkey and you get your first week free. So you like a trial just to check it out and then 25% off your first three months. So I think it's like five bucks a month or something after that, that thing. I highly recommend it. Our kids love it. Even just not our show, but just like they love the platform. Um, one of the episodes that I love that's on there now, I think, I think it's episode one is the faith goggles one. That one was really fun where I went snorkeling with Kinsley and then I used it as a really cool analogy for, um, the kingdom and all the stuff, but I'm not going to give it away. I'm not going to give it away. You got to go watch. Um, Okay. American Awakening chapter two. Let me toss. Let me go here. So this one was really good. Um, John, you're just, you're killing it. You're out here killing it, John. It's too easy for you. It's too easy for you. 
Um, but what I loved about, so chapter two is called, you have a purpose now believe it. And I absolutely Preach. loved Yes. And he goes back to kind of the founders, um, the declaration of independence and some certain other certain things. But then he, this is really a really good testimony uh, chapter. Like John really shares his story. And John, John has a fascinating story to being from being the only white guy in an all black fraternity. Um, At Harvard, right? Um, no, MIT. Where'd he uh, go? Nope. Nope. Yeah. You pin. Um, oh, or you pin. pin or whatever. You, what, what, do you, what do you guys call it? I, I don't know. We're not East Coast people, John. Tell us what you call it. Um, but yeah, to then his uh, successful financial career and then his kids and the ups and downs and helping out with presidential stuff. It's just super, super, super cool. Um, and church and um, uh, it's just such a, like a diverse story that you're like, man, he's seen a lot and done a lot. And so I really want to uh, listen to him. But what I love about this chapter is just zoning in on that topic of like, man, you can't American. We can't have an awakening for our soul. We can't have an awakening for this moment until you actually realize your purpose. That's really what it is. You, yeah. you have to have a purpose. You have to know what, if you can't answer the big questions, why am I here? What am I doing? What's the point? Right. Or, you know, or who am I? Uh, then it's not going to go well for you. Or if you answer those wrongly, because I think a lot of people answer those, but they answer them poorly or they answer them without critical thinking. They just answer them based on just like the five senses or what feels good, smells good or tastes mm-hmm. good, or just the default cultural answer. Mm-hmm. But just right, right off the bat, what does that word purpose speak to you? What do you think about all that stuff? Sure. Well, even thinking like the American uh, climate, even like social media, um, going on and saying something or responding to something, if you don't know who you are, what purpose you serve, mm. um, what mission you are on, so to speak, or what your identity is, I feel like you could easily just speak to speak. And sometimes those words will not be helpful. Sometimes um, it'll come from a wrong motive. And so instead of like, if we don't know, or sometimes we'll just speak because we feel like we have to be heard instead of like, oh, no, well, that is that who true to who I am? Do I need yeah. to speak right now? Is it better that I don't speak? Like what, where am I in this, um, I don't know, kingdom? Yeah. Then I think that really changes just how we interact with other people totally. too. And there's particular missions and particular purposes, guys, but specifically if you love the Lord or not even if the Lord, this is the purpose he has for you. You just might not be obeying it. And that is to find your true self and glory and blessing in him in your creator, right? And then the command to love him and love others. And if you put those two dominoes back to back, you will find purpose, right? That you are uniquely created. He is proud of you. He is for you. He created you for a reason, for a purpose on this earth, right? To have blessing and meaning and goodness and glory wound up in yourself, divinely reflecting who he is, using that power then to love him back as an act of worship and love other people. And what that does is that deeply then gives you the meaning and purpose you are looking for. I just wanted to read this one uh, or two paragraphs and then get into a fascinating kind of, I think, paradox that a lot of us fall into without realizing it. And it says this, people who have a sense of purpose also technically live healthier lives. We are all probably aware that the immune system influences whether we get sick or not, but it also plays a critical role in many measures of health and indeed can trigger feelings of depression, loneliness, and cardiovascular diseases. And those who strongly believe, quote, I have something to contribute to society or, quote, my life has a sense of direction, have exhibited highly favorable, favorable, favorable immune system activity, meaning Mm. literally when you have a purpose, you're healthier. Like it's just like, and that's science. And that also has to do with some trauma related type things and stuff like that. But your body, your body, the cells, organisms, et cetera, work better and when you actually are living in your God-given design. Mm-hmm. That's fascinating. And I think that's totally a God thing. Conversely, those who report that they don't sense a larger purpose or don't make contributions to the lives of others, but still say they are happy, fascinating, exhibit immune system activity that tends to result, result in poor health. Mm-hmm. In other words, pursuing our own self-care without a larger purpose or investment in others may actually be detrimental to your health. I love this part. Further, a focus on happiness and pleasure is associated with higher levels of loneliness and depression. I'm going to read that again. Further, scientifically, focusing on happiness and pleasure as like your point of your life is actually associated with higher levels of loneliness and depression. Mm. 
Those who believe how happy I am says a lot about how worthwhile my life is. Or if I don't feel happy, maybe there is something wrong with me, reported the highest levels of loneliness and depression. And consider one more thing. Studies show that those who pray or meditate frequently are 47% more likely to have a sense of mission or Mm. purpose. Wow, that's fascinating. And I think that last, let's just start backwards. That last one's easy because we don't realize how much we are just drones, zombies, and robots, Mm -hmm. right? We, We don't realize how easy it is in this life to just go about it mindlessly. Yeah. We're not, a lot of us aren't trying to actively destroy our lives. We're just going about our lives with our eyes closed. And when you go about our eyes with your eyes closed, you walk off a cliff, mm-hmm. right? That's different. And so that is, I'm preaching, I'm preaching. I'm sorry, I'm getting into it. But <laughs> Throwing the book down. I know, I know. <laughs> I need two hands for this. But that, but that makes sense, right? And that, 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 But praying and meditating and kind of centering yourself in God's truth, um, just even the space to do that automatically makes you happier and gives you a bigger mission and purpose because you just have the time to. Yeah. Like I almost feel like we, man, what I'm saying is we naturally start to feel more centered and purposeful just by taking space and time. Sure. That's fascinating. But then back to the health, the, the, back to the one right above that, I thought was the most fascinating one here. Thoughts of, I think it's kind of like that C.S. Lewis quote, right? Where he says like, um, uh, 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 if you aim for second order things, no, what's he say? Yeah. If you aim for second order things, no, no. If you aim for first, <laughs> if you aim for first order things, uh, you'll get second order things thrown in. If you aim for mm-hmm. second order yes. things, you lose both. Yes. So and basically true. what he's talking about is just like, if you focus on the things that are most important, mission and purpose, you probably will actually find happiness. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, but if you focus on something like happiness, you lose it all. You mm-hmm. have no mission or purpose and you ain't going to get happiness either. That's so true. What do you ha- React. <laughs> <laughs> what a phrase. React. <laughs> Uh, what I, I, meant no, to, I, just, I meant to say what is your reaction to i that? agree with that it's so good well give me more i mean how do you feel about oh. that um do you feel like that's a problem in society do you think people are concentrating too much on happiness do you feel like um you sometimes personally do like how, how do you how do you wrestle through that to make sure that you're not you know how do you balance as a mom because i think this one is actually more pertinent to a lot of moms of that like mission and purpose of uh you know um, being a mother or, you know, uh, being a CEO, you know, being out and you're just, how do you balance all the kind of the pressures of, of purpose in life while still keeping the first things, the first things and not just like what feels immediately good? That's a great question. Um, I mean, I don't think I speak. You speak for all moms in the whole world. <laughs> I mean, I don't have it all together. No, I just, I was thinking about that. Um, in my own life. I think when I'm so focused, well, I think of the example of like, um, sometimes when we are really lonely and we're really longing for friendship and maybe we've reached out and it just hasn't been reciprocated or we felt rejected or whatever those things, it's really easy for me to then get really down or discouraged and just like have a self pity party and not want to continue to try. Um, And so hopefully, let me bring this around. And so I can get really down. But then when I actually think of the purpose and like, okay, you know, I just, who, I wonder who needs a friend instead of, oh, poor me, I don't have a friend. Yeah. That sends me on a mission. And then I like receive joy from discovering who I can pour into or joy of like, oh, I'll text them and encourage them today or see how they're doing or ask them if they want to get coffee or write them a note or all those things. It's like it really does fill me up with joy and happiness that I get to give something to someone Mm. instead of the focus being on how can they give something to me, if that makes sense. And so that's just like a really small example, I feel like, of when you focus on the main thing you'll get both like that mm-hmm. C.S. Lewis coat. But when you focus on maybe the fruit of it, you may not get either. And so a lot of the times when I focus on other people, like even if I'm just sad and down or something, if I can make myself write a note to a friend or make something beautiful, I feel so much more encouraged than if I were just to, I don't know, sit there and yeah. I don't know think about all my woes or whatever. So I think that whole thing of like pursuing happiness, happiness is like a feeling. And so feelings follow our actions 
they can't drive our lives. And so choosing to do the right thing and the good thing, and then the happiness will follow. Yes, exactly. And maybe not always the happiness, but definitely the joy. Oh, exactly, exactly. Sorry, guys, I'm yawning because if you know, know, we shoot these late at night. Did I like no, put it was, you to it sleep? Was, what was, the truth was so compelling and the truth was so good. I realized I basically could just be done with the night in full contentment. <laughs> That's basically what happened. This is also the man when like Bible study is late at night or a meeting or something and we end in prayer. Oh, I fall asleep at the prayer asleep every, every night. every time. Every time. But this is what you say. Huh. Well, tell him what you say. What do I eat till you say? You always say, but what a way to go out. Just talking to the Lord yes. and then I'm, I'm done. What a way I'm to, out. yeah. What a way to fall asleep <laughs> except in just the absolute, um, you know, supplication oriented presence of right, God. Right, right. Oh, what a blessing. <laughs> I still remember when I was Sometimes alone. I don't wake up too. So sometimes they have to wake me up, you know, and I just yes. tell them like, oh, I wasn't sleeping. I was just talking to the Lord longer than no, you. No, you admit <laughs> that you were sleeping. I, I remember when I was a little girl, I went to church with my grandma who was not a believer at all. And, but the sweetest woman in the whole world. But she world, took you to church? Well, she came to church with us. Oh, okay, I think my yeah, mom yeah. was like yeah. on worship team that night or something like no, that. She mean. just was the sweetest, sweetest grandma. She's like four, eight. With, she just was so cute. She would like save her old underwear to give to the Philippines. Like just really cute. Like, <laughs> That's amazing. But anyway, she fell asleep once in church with like her mouth wide open, like snoring. And I nudged her. I go, Grandma, I think you're asleep. And she goes, oh, no, no, no. I was just praying. Those people, yeah, those people <laughs> that like want to admit they're sleeping. I'm like, I, like she was like yeah. this. Yeah, that's amazing. Like, no, no, For those who are like, on YouTube, you just got the blessing of a lifetime right there. There you go. Okay. Anyway, back to American Awakening. Um, but yeah, purpose and mission is so so important. Now, now, John, I love I love how he uh, ended this with he ends with their actual personal family mission statement, and y'all know that's our love language. <laughs> y'all know personal Can you family mission that again? statements. Y'all know. I feel like you need to have a big old I know. head of hair on that. Exactly. One. Uh, personal like mission statements are. We love them. So, uh, talk about that. How how, do, how can people like? How about you talk about it? I feel like I've talked a lot. Well, it's because people have clearly said in the reviews because of this podcast sleeping. that they want you to talk more. <laughs> really? Oh yeah, everyone yeah. wants Alyssa, and I don't blame them because I want Alyssa. That's why I married you. <laughs> 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 oh, I'm trying to find the page. Um, but it was really good, guys, because basically what he talks about is like you have to. Here's the here's the reason why I think everyone, individual or family, needs to have some sort of mission statement. Um, and this and let me be clear, this isn't just some raw, raw, fake thing. It's like just be realistic with yourself. You just need something that just says this is where I'm going, right? You cannot drive. <laughs> you cannot drive anywhere without knowing where you're going. You cannot have a business without a mission statement. You cannot be playing a sports team without a mission statement. You cannot, nothing. It's just weird that humans in general, individually or families, like are one of the only people that don't put any direction in their life, right? Um, be specific. And I would say, instead of feeling a lot of pressure, work backwards from like your DNA. And what I mean mm-hmm. by that is just like, start thinking you? about yourself. Yeah. What do you like to do? What are you passionate about? Yeah. What do you value? Yeah. What are you wired in? Yeah. Um, and if you're in a family, start talking about how team roles are are true with that like mm-hmm. why why are us why are our five teammates together why do we all have why are you like that and me like this and how could we make a certain type of team right like the new england patriots or the golden state warriors they have particular offenses and defenses and game plans based around the skills of those those players on the team right so that that game plan can't just translate to another team because that other team doesn't have those exact type of players um and so yeah I love it. And the way they set theirs up is really, really cool. It's like a paragraph. And then, um, so they say, we believe that our father loves his children completely and without condition and has a special role in place for each child in our home. We will show each of God's children inside our family and out that we love that love and encourage, sorry, that love and encourage each to find his or her special role and place in this world. To that end, we will, and then they list a bunch of bullet points that are like kind of their, these are very much our values in our family, you know, Um, and it's awesome, you know, and so thinking about that and uh, honing that in can really put you on a special path. And so, man, if you're wrestling with certain decisions, if you're wrestling with certain things, lean into this conversation, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Um, And when would you say that you feel like you started getting some vision in an individual way on your purpose and mission? When do you start feeling like, okay, I understand how God made me, why and what and where I should start heading, that type of thing? 
let's say because we, we have a lot of young adults listening or you know newly married etc how do you encourage them of, in the beginning of this kind of process or what do you feel like was the moment you had an epiphany or something changed or you just kind of begin to you know it didn't when did it stop being really full of pressure and anxiety and like oh what am i what does the lord have for me and sure. instead it was just like oh this is a fun conversation to think about hmm. i mean i feel like my 20s were spent searching for like what's god's will for my life what do what, who am I made yeah. to be? What am I passionate about? You know, what job should I have? All those things. And because, yeah, you can over crank this into that. Oh, which yeah. Is like I feel like pressure. when you're 18, it, well, when I was 18, it was like the hardest because then you're dealing with like what's God's will. Yeah. And, um, which is another conversation. But, um, I don't know. I feel like it got more exciting probably when I was like 24. And mm. it's funny. It's like, you learn what you love and what you value and what you're good at partly because of what you fail at too. Mm. Like things that just, Oh, okay. I can realize that that's not yeah. my, my best thing or that you just learn and grow. You have to just do a bunch of stuff. You, you do. Can't, Cause by the way, those questions about who are you, what do you like? What do you wire? Like you actually can't even answer those questions until you just start doing a bunch of yeah. stuff and be like, Oh, that sucked. That was good. I liked that. I didn't like that. That filled me up. That didn't. Right. Yeah. Like good for point. instance, uh, I went to Israel for a semester. This is just side note. And it was a dream come true. And part of me was like, oh, I wonder if I, I should be an archaeologist. Like, that'd be fun. We did an archaeology <laughs> dig for a day for a field trip. And it was literally the most boring thing I've ever done in my whole life. I couldn't even stand it for an hour. I was like, well, that's not going to happen. So anyway, um, but honestly, it's so funny. I honestly feel like just in the last two years, I'm 32 now, where I've really been like, okay, this is who I am. Mm. This is who God has called me to be. And a huge part of that, it's not age-based. I don't think um, this is something maybe to encourage you if you are younger or not. Um, it really was me asking the Lord, not only having all those life experiences, but me asking the Lord, who am I? Because I think my in my 20s and in my teens, I would look at scripture and be like, okay, this is what God says about me, which is mm. so important. Like I am free. I am redeemed. I am his beloved. I've talked about this on the podcast before. So true. But then just like in my 30s, I started to ask, but Lord, who am I specifically, like uniquely? Like who do you see me as? Who have you made me to be? And it was then that the Lord gave me some words to really cling to that so resonated that I was like, oh, this is who I am and this is my purpose mm. in the world, you know, and in like a personal level. Like, obviously, I knew what my purpose was in the kingdom according to the word, but it was like, oh, the spirit has spoke. Like, does that make sense? Yeah. I feel like the spirit has spoken to me of like, oh, but this is the part you are going to play. And so then when the doubt comes, when the fears come, when I'm like, I feel so ill equipped, I remember that I'm like, oh, but the Lord has spoken this over mm. me and that may seem that might sound like well how's the lord speak that's a whole nother conversation but it was me really praying and seeking the lord about it and then having a handful of friends like speak it over me like i felt like i was praying for you this morning and i felt like the lord gave me this word for you and then like having it confirmed over and over and so those are the things that i feel like really helped me to know what my unique purpose was mm -hmm. in the kingdom of god does that make sense? Yeah. So much so, I think we're going to end on that because that was <laughs> profound. So I don't think that's the age thing. I think you can do that now. Like, just ask the spirit yeah. if you haven't before, who am I? Like, who have you made me to be? What part do you want me to play in your kingdom? Who, what identity words do you have for me? Um, and then as he reveals that, I think you can then start being like, okay. And it's not going to be like, I mean, I don't know what it's going to be like, but for me, it wasn't like, okay, you are going to be an author and you're going to da 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 da. It was like, you are a hope bringer. And so then in every facet of my life, every role I play as a mom, as a wife, mm. on social media, in my family, with friends, like I'm to bring hope. Mm. And so, um, so yeah. That's one really good point, by the way, guys, is I do think God most of the time speaks identity, mission, and purpose over you in a value-based way, mm -hmm. uh, not a vocational-based way. You can yeah. have an assignment that's vocational, but I think he, but the, but he gives you a lot more of like, yes, this is who you are, and you're going to bring that to the job in these five years, and then into this job sure. in these seven years, and then as a parent our life here, is going to change. We're yeah, but you'll still be the same kind of like eth, um, ethos. You'll still be the yeah. same like DNA. Yeah. So. 
Guys, again, pick it up. American Awakening. We are loving, loving uh, a couple weeks into this conversation. Hope you guys are too. Let us know feedback you have. Mm -hmm. Um, And again, check out the Yippie Show, yippie.tv or jeffandalyssa.com slash yippie and just use the promo code Bethkey and you get all the hookups free week and 25% off uh, first three months, which makes it like $5.99 or something. So Cheaper than my Starbucks drink. Huh? I know, (laughs) right? And yet you can watch a bunch of shows, including ours, and hopefully be encouraged. So, hey, we love you guys. We'll see you next week.